This is AutoLine Daily reporting on all aspects of the global automotive industry. Sales of battery electric cars stalled out last month in the U.S. market. While they had been growing by strong percentage gains every month, in September they were flat compared to a year ago, though Tesla did post a 4% year-over-year gain. Even with the addition of the Hyundai Kona, Kia Nero, and Audi e-tron, the segment did not grow. Audi must be especially worried. Sales got off to a good start with the e-tron, but have been falling every month since then and are now down by half. The same pretty much goes for the Jaguar I-Pace. And this does not bode well for traditional automakers. They cannot seem to make much headway selling electric cars. Mitsubishi is teasing a couple of concepts before they debut at the Tokyo Auto Show at the end of the month. First up is the MI Tech, which is a plug-in hybrid SUV that's powered by four electric motors and uses a gas turbine range extender. It also features an augmented reality windshield, which has all kinds of information projected on it. Mitsubishi also teased this funky-looking concept called the Super Height K-Wagon. And as the name implies, it's a K car, which are the class of tiny passenger cars sold in Japan. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, or IIHS, did a study on lane keep assistance and cruise control. Many of the test drivers participating in the study thought the systems had a few small issues, but some of them felt that lane keeping systems were flawed to the point that they didn't trust them. It all boiled down to the vehicles making choices without the driver's input. In our experience, lane keeping systems make the steering feel vague and indirect. They nibble at the lines marking the lanes, especially going around curves. And there's your technical term for the day. Nibble is the term that engineers use to describe how the steering is making little inputs on its own, like when you're driving on pavement with grooves in it, and the steering wheel jiggles a bit. EV startup Lucid Motors is inching closer to production of its first electric vehicle, the Air. The company's gone through a number of issues, but seems to be back on track after a billion-dollar investment last year from the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund. Lucid is in the very early stages of building a $675 million manufacturing plant just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. Lucid hopes to have more than 2,000 full-time employees. Well, here's our Autoline Insight. A greenfield factory costing hundreds of millions of dollars that takes six years to build and will employ thousands of people working for a company that has never made anything is a recipe for disaster. And by comparison, Tesla's $2 billion Chinese factory is nearly up and running. Reuters reports the aim is to start production this month and make at least 1,000 Model 3s a week by the end of the year. Speaking of EVs, Electrify America is expanding its number of public charging stations, and now it's coming to your home. Its Level 2 home charger is rated at a charging power of up to 7.6 kilowatts. It has a 24-foot cable and can be used indoors or out. It's Wi-Fi enabled so customers can get charging data on an app, and in the future, it will allow owners to program charging for off-peak hours. The Level 2 Charger is priced at $500. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Trucks and SUVs continue to gain in popularity, and according to the market research group NPD, that shift is leading to an increase in larger diameter wheels and tires. Over the last three years, wheels that are 17 inches and larger have increased in market share by nearly 12%. Big wheels and tires sure make a vehicle look better, but that heavier, unsprung weight usually detracts from the ride and handling. And Lincoln is bringing back that coach door version of the Continental. The cars are built at Ford's Flat Rock assembly plant, then shipped to Cabot's coach builders in Boston, 
where they stretched the sedan's wheelbase by six inches. It's not clear how many Lincoln will make this time around, but it sold out last year's allotment of 80 cars in just 48 hours. The cars start at $115,000 compared to $46,000 for a regular base Continental. And that alone explains why Lincoln is bringing the car back. I gotta tell you, that is the way to make a profit. Governments around the world are mandating that automakers build electric vehicles, and they're doing it. The only problem is no one knows how to make a profit on EVs. So to learn about the issues that are hindering EV adoption, be sure to watch AutoLine this week on our website or on our YouTube channel. But that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.